Right here on ET now, I'm Ubina Kapasi, with me is Siddharth Bhamri and Siddharth of course today is our auto sector special, it's been um, a sector quite in news, uh, not only of course because of the fact that you know, we have seen stock prices correct, Maruti, Aisha etc, but even Trump's entire tariff tantrum, so we are going to address that, we're going to address all of your viewer queries over the next 60 minutes for now. Market's looking weak, we've lost about 6 tenths of a percent on the Nifty, we're threatening to breach even 10,300, 200 points gone for the Sensex as well. Uh, but the broader markets are being in, able to hold on with some minor gains for the mid cap as well as the small cap. Meantime, here are your top headlines at this hour, Jay Prakash Associates and once again, it's Rakesh Junjunwala's Rare Enterprises that has bought about 3 crore shares in the counter at a price point of 18.37 per share the stock is rallying on the back of that big entry and clsa meantime is uh, talking about tata motors they want to maintain a sell stance on that they're cutting the fy 1920 eps by 14 to 19 percent they're also cutting the target price to 330 rupees from 395 earlier as they see GLR's volume growth lagging peers and there's also rising competition in SUVs. And autos is the flavour of the season. Jefferies, however, on the flip side has upgraded Mahindra and Mahindra. They've also upped the target price to 860 rupees as they believe fundamental factors have improved in the recent months, margins have expanded and that's why they're optimistic when it comes to m and PFC meantime had a conference call wherein they expected the government sector NPS to reduce in FY19 and private sector net NPS to reduce to 2.2% by next year. Deutsche Bank has a buy on power finance corporation with a target at 140 rupees. Gravita India meantime is seeing some very smart gains. This after the company has won an order. Valued at 300 crore rupees, 2.2% higher for Gravita India. Meantime, OBC shareholders have approved for a share issue to the government at 124.6 rupees per share. That along with all the other mid-cap PSBs are rallying in trade. Edelweiss Finance has called off the deal to buy relegate security operations. That's what Cogensis uh, and agencies are telling us, Edelweiss Finance says that Relegate could not obtain the necessary clearances, hence the false rule. And we have Goldman Sachs uh, talking about Voltas. They've upgraded the stock to a buy from neutral target at 640 rupees as they believe that structural growth in air conditioners could drive growth and that's something that could continue for a long period of time. Well, that's, uh, you know, top headlines and a lot of uh, news and action in market in today's trading session, which was so uh, not visible when we started on a very, uh, you know, somber note. Clearly, Nifty is under pressure. Bank Nifty, if you can see, is absolutely flat. And Mumina, today is the day when uh, you are seeing PSU banks doing really well, but still market is down. We are seeing OMC stock uh, going down. Some of the large cap names uh, like Reliance are under pressure. Uh, Apart from Reliance, ITC has a strong weightage or high weightage in uh, Nifty. That stock is down by 1%, clearly uh, taking market along with it. If you look at you know what's uh, happening in the overall space, uh, that's option space, we are seeing a lot of call writing taking place today, which was not the case in last 2-3 trading sessions. 10,300, 10,400 and 10,500 call options are seeing heightened activity at this point of time in a range of 8,000 contracts to 10,000 contracts, which is pretty okay, not less, not very significant. Let's understand from our experts that uh, how, uh, you know, they are approaching this market and today we have an auto special uh, show. So clearly we are going to discuss more about autos, but let me first welcome uh, Kunal Bhutra into the show. Kunal, markets are pretty okay, nothing great happening. We shouldn't have seen this uh, negative take, uh, but it's Reliance and ITC predominantly taking this market down. But you continue with your buy calls and you are suggesting to buy quick heel, m and and we, uh, Mobina was just talking about uh, Jeffrey's upgrade on m and and NBCC, that stock since last 2-3 trading session has been adding a lot of long positions. What's your take on charts? 
Yes, Rath, uh, you know, so the, I'm maintaining that long bias because I believe broadly that the index is consolidating and last few days we've seen the market breadth uh, being slightly better for uh, you know, the mid caps and the, and the tire to large cap names as well. And I believe the, you know, the focus could probably remain there for at least a couple of days before you see a uh, you know, move on the indices. The first one is a buy on quick heel. Uh, and uh, I think that the, yesterday the stock had uh, you know, risen with a very strong set of volumes coming out of a you know, decent enough consolidation. Today, even after uh, you know, this 55, 60 points move on the Nifty, the stock is still uh, you know, uh, hovering on the flat side, but the volumes are inching up higher. And I believe that that could be a sign that you might see the stock rising up higher once again. So quickly is a buy from my side, targets of 340, stop loss at 294. The second is a buy on uh, uh, M&M. And I think on the early charts, uh, I think I had flagged this uh, in a couple of days back as well, that the stock is forming a bullish flag pattern. The breakout is closer to 740, 741. <coughs> On spot levels, it's breached as those levels today. So I believe that the stock can rise, uh, you know, some more uh, you know, percentage points from current levels. 780 is the target which I'm eyeing on M&M, recommending a buy with stop loss at 735. And the uh, third stock is about an NBCC. Yes, the stock has been adding a lot of, uh, you know, OI since last couple of days and on the long side. And even the price is, uh, you know, showing some bullish chart patterns. You know, a few days back there was a decent enough rise for NBCC, then a consolidation, and now you're seeing, uh, you know, a continuation of up move. I believe these are positive signs for the short term trend. So, this thing about 222 as a target, stop plus 192. Thanks, Renal, for that. Quick heel is interesting. You know, there's a lot of volume action which took place yesterday, big move. And Kunal feel that there can be a follow up buying as well, which would take that uh, stock further high. MM is the other buy call apart from NBCC, which went uh, ex dividend yesterday. And that's the reason it was a bit soft in yesterday's trading session. Let's now welcome uh, Ashwin Patil, research analyst, uh, auto sector. Uh, from LKP Securities. Ashwin, welcome to ET now. Uh, you know, there are a host of questions when it comes to uh, auto space, whether you're preferring four-wheeler or two-wheeler, how, you know, CV has done really well. But what we have been discussing today morning is about auto ancillary and how the changing dynamics of uh, this industry because of EVs over a period of time would, uh, you know, impact uh, auto ancillary space. Where you see pockets of vulnerability in terms of, uh, you know, companies which may get highly impacted because of EVs if they don't, you know, do any innovation. Can you throw light on auto ancillary space? Yeah, sure. Um, first of all, thanks, uh, thanks uh, for the warm welcome. Uh, I think uh, within the auto angst space, first of all, uh, the, the EV evolution that is going to happen uh, over the next coming few years, I think that is going to impact, uh, uh, you know, uh, certain companies within the auto angst space. First of all, I think the engine makers, the diesel engine makers or the uh, petrol engine makers, the engine makers will be impacted first of all because of, uh, you know, conversion of uh, their engines into uh, electric, uh, you know, uh, EV, EVs, EV, EV engines, and uh, I think that is uh, the, the companies which are into it. Uh, uh, like Bosch is there, then uh, 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 Greaves Cotton is there. These companies, which are uh, primarily into making engines for automobiles, they will be impacted. Uh, furthermore, I think uh, the uh, the accessories or the other auto angles which are related with engines like the radiants, the, the coolers, the gasket makers for uh, all these uh, uh, this other uh, auto angles which are related with engines uh, surrounding the engine, they will be getting impacted up to a good extent. Uh, I think there are a whole host of companies other than uh, which are going to which are not going to get impacted which will be uh, you know definitely uh, stealing the limelight uh, than those who will be getting impacted i think those companies need to be seen uh, with with a good uh, target and a good future coming uh, ahead because uh, they will uh, be definitely ones which uh, the investors can invest into and uh, a few companies which uh, uh, we have cited which will be getting benefited out of the EV evolution are uh, like companies like uh, which are making batteries, the tire makers, uh, the suspension makers, they will be the uh, uh, companies which will not be impacted and we should focus on that I think. First of all, I think uh, uh, Excite Industries looks very attractive at this point in time 
uh, you know, the stock has corrected, but it has got a lot of value. GST has actually benefited it. Uh, and uh, going forward, even the services, uh, they have uh, improved. And the competition which uh, they are getting from the players like Amara Raja, the company is very well poised to, uh, you know, take uh, price cuts and uh, reduce the differential of price gap between them and uh, pose a good attractive kind of, you know, equally good uh, quality, uh, qualitative uh, batteries uh, to, the, to the customers. So I think Excite is one stock that we need to look at. Second is Apollo Tires. <coughs> Apollo Tires is, uh, you know, within the tire space, it is getting benefited out of uh, again, it is uh, EV agnostic, so it is getting benefited out of the new capacities that it is coming up with in both in the domestic as well as the export markets. Third is uh, Jamna Auto that we like within the uh, 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 suspension space and uh, that is a market leader uh, in, in the domestic markets as well as it's a number two or number three player in the global space as well and uh, it has got great uh, 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 client base which is more of on the commercial vehicle side and we know that the commercial vehicle uh, cycle is on an up move so this stock is going to get benefited to the maximum and there are the macros are also improving uh, for the commercial vehicle cycle to uh, get benefited so uh, jamna auto is the third stock which we like and these three stocks would be ev agnostic uh, the stocks which which will be uh, impacted Understood. because of ev evolution on the negative right. side as we said earlier uh, are the Understood. engine okay okay ashwin you know what we're going to talk and we were just Keep this discussion going for the next 45 odd minutes as well and we're going to get in your wealth creation as well uh, ideas in just a bit but yeah like you said ev agnostic stocks you know that's that is a key theme that ashwin is recommending but of course um for now it's all about your viewer queries we have uh, our very first query coming in on our auto special show it's coming in via our twitter page at ask bnsn and it's girish who has sent in his question now he says he has bought 100 shares of hero motor corp at a price point of 3,563 rupees, he wants to know what must he do with the time horizon of six months. Um, just some minor gains is what he is making currently on Hero Motor Corp. Um, let's understand firstly what exactly the perspective is on Hero Motor. Remember that the Q3 numbers were decent, but again, you know, like every other auto company, this one as well was um, wa did come under pressure in front of uh, uh, in terms of the margins. Um, but when it comes to electric mobility, like Ashwin has been pointing out, that would be a key theme. He says they are well prepared to enter electric mobility but let's get in more perspective from Ashwin himself then um, Ashwin how do you see Hero Motor Corp poised you know there's all that talk about rural demand and rural revival and that's one of the key markets um, you know where, where two wheelers cater to so how do you look at Hero Motor? See, within the two-wheeler industry, Hero and Bajaj are doing really very well. Uh, as far as the volumes are concerned, in Feb, uh, Hero posted about 20% growth and uh, overall also YTD, it is uh, posting close to similar kind of growth. I mean, uh, the uh, close to about 10 to 12% growth uh, we expect for the full year. And uh, I think the coming uh, season will be of marriage. So April, May will be a marriage season and also in the rural markets, the company is doing really very well. The rural income or the rural economy, as we all know, is on an up move. And uh, Hero gains about 55, 50 to 55% of its volumes from the rural markets. So uh, definitely this is one stock which we need to look at. And also if we are expecting normal monsoon, then uh, definitely the company gets benefited out of that uh, as we have seen in the past. So uh, at this point in time with new launches coming up and the rural demand also steaming up, I think one should be in the stock at this point in time and uh, one year target uh, we are looking at close to 4000 rupees. So uh, the viewer can definitely uh, be in the stock and if uh, you know the stock slightly dips at uh, any point in time, he can definitely buy into it more. All right, that's Hero Motor Corp, one of the key demand drivers being, um, you know, the marriage season, etc. That is something that does tend to drive, uh, you know, demand for two wheelers. Uh, Kunal, let's understand your perspective on Hero Motor Corp. It's at 3615. Our viewers making some marginal gains. What should he do? No, I think he's timed it, uh, you know, pretty well, uh, Mubina, I think, in terms of the stock price. Uh, you know, largely, I think the stock is, uh, has been going through a range, uh, you know, kind of a move in last, uh, you know, four or five months. But this 3400, 3450 seems to be now a very solid and strong base 
for Hero Motor Corp. So I believe that if the overall texture for auto stocks keep on improving going forward, then I believe you could see attraction coming back into the prices once again. So it's a good price which you've bought into. It's just that the stock is consolidating. So maybe time is what you would need more, uh, you know, in terms of holding on to the stock. I believe if you are a patient investor and have a time horizon of six months plus, you could look at even a 3800, 3850 target on Hero Motor Corp. Well, uh, that's a whole, uh, you know, call coming on from both fundamental as well as technicals. And clearly, Hiromoto Corp is poised for further gains. Technically, 3,800 plus levels is what Kunal is suggesting. So hold on to your Hiromoto Corp shares. Our next query is from Pooja Sena, and uh, she has bought Excide around 228, which is not uh, very far away from current market price, and 300 shares. And she is asking what is to be done, whether sh she should hold or you know uh, sell at this point of time. Ashwin, you did mention about the factors, what you like in Excite industry, so we won't discuss factors, but let's discuss valuation. Tell our viewers that what kind of valuation Excite has seen historically and where it is poised now. And we have discussed already that why you are bullish on valuation parameters, what is so attractive? See, valuation wise, if we have, we uh, if we want to discuss, then uh, definitely Excite is uh, uh, you know, perennially trading close to 18 to 20 times uh, uh, PE and uh, currently also it is close to about 17, 17, 18 lower range of the uh, valuation band that it has been trading. Hence, we can say that on valuation side also it is quite attractive and uh, if you look at, uh, uh, you know, the and this, this we are talking about the core business and we are adding about 40 to 50 rupees of the uh, Excite Life Insurance business that it is having. So, uh, and uh, the, uh, you know, this comes uh, to a target close to about uh, 300 rupees uh, on Excide from current levels. So, I think valuation wise also it looks quite attractive at this point in time. Valuation wise looking attractive, target price around 300. So, from current levels it's a substantial upside and even from your buy price puja which is 228, stock has substantial upside. Coming to uh, Technicals, Kunal, uh, yesterday's move was very interesting and uh, closed above some important moving averages. Yes, Dad, but uh, I think on a longer term chart patterns as well, I think this is a very good chart or a very positive uh, the price pattern chart. I think for the last, uh, you know, one and a half years, uh, you know, it's, it's formed uh, in a pattern of a bullish flag, bullish pendant and that too on long term time scale charts that should have bullish, uh, you know, implications, you know, going forward for Excite. So it's just that the stock is trying to form a base around this 200 mark, trying to go through a time consolidation more. Uh, you know, at current levels, I believe it's a good buy, a good hold at current levels. Hold on to it. Uh, if the stock comes back to say 200, look to average further and bring your cost price lower. Okay, there you have it. That's Excite Industries for you. Um, the uh, technical as well as a fundamental call. Kunal, at this point, thanks so much for joining us and helping our viewers out. But uh, don't go anywhere. We're going to take a very short break. Ashwin Patel will still be with us, and he'll be giving us his wealth creation ideas. Welcome back. You're watching Buy Now, Sell Now right here on ET Now. And remember, it's our auto sector special. We've had a whole host of brokerages as well chatting about the sector. First up, it's a downgrade on Tata Motors by CLSA. And we're joined by Ajay Sharma to give us why is CLSA uh, believing that even after all this correction, it may still not be able to deliver much going forward. Ajay, over to you. Well, Mubina, you know, uh, CLSA's downgrade comes at a time when the stock is already down and out and uh, worse performing in the sector. Uh, so perhaps CLSA's downgrade is the last one, last downgrade which has come in. Uh, but nevertheless, the stock is reacting to that. Almost a day's low right now, over 2% cut. CLSA believes that uh, despite the correction, the time has not come when you start buying Tata Motors because there is structural weakness setting in as far as the JLR business is concerned. The business is getting competitive. Uh, some of the German car majors are actually planning for launches, almost timing it along with JLR launches. Not only that, they believe that uh, the competitive advantage because of weak product mix will actually wither, will eat into any benefits coming out of uh, their hedging policies. Remember, uh, adverse hed hedging policies impacted their business quite a lot last couple of uh, quarters and now it was reversing. But the benefits of reversal in hedging policies will also be eaten away by weak product mix uh, coupled with, of course, weak volume. Not only that, European demand uh, is expected to weak as well to be weak as well. So 14 to 19 percent is the kind of downgrade they've done as far as the earnings goes. 
and even on the target price the new target price lies at 330 and uh, the stock is you know trading under pressure clearly on the uh, negative commentary coming in from CLSA on Tata Motors today Thanks, Ajay, for that. And yes, you know, the JLR uh, performance had actually been a bit subdued even in Q3, which came in as a big shocker because uh, that was something that was supporting the quarterly earnings for some time for Tata Motors. But while CLSA has downgraded um, Tata Motors, we have Jeff Fries that has actually upgraded M&M. Now, their reasons, of course, for this upgrade to a buy are that the fundamental factors for the company have actually improved quite a bit in the recent past, especially if you look at the two key segments, um, you know, that M&M does operate in, that's Tractor as well as LCV, where Jeff Fries says that the cycles for both these segments have actually been stronger than expected. Um, and more importantly, while most of these auto companies have been seeing margins compressed due to higher input costs, M&M on one side has seen its margins expand by over 100 basis points on a year-to-date basis for the fiscal 2018. Hence, perhaps that's one of the reasons why they're, up, uh, they're upgrading M&M. And also, the value of the listed investments owned by M&M is also appreciating. They've also upped the target price to 860 from 820 rupees. So, it's an interesting note by Jeffries. They are upgrading M&M. Okay, the auto sector, a lot of action over there, Tata Motors downgrade, M&M upgrade and certainly which stock prices are resembling that Tata Motors uh, has corrected substantially from uh, higher levels and uh, Tata Motors DVR has also corrected almost 50% from its peak suggesting that how much you know pain has uh, that stock gone. M&M after consolidation has been you know, moving higher and our technical experts have been suggesting to give a buy call. Let's move on with our queries and uh, you know Ashwin before I go to uh, queries I want to talk about your wealth creation ideas. You did you know uh, touch upon Jamna Auto and Ashok Leland is uh, also a wealth creation idea for you and interestingly those are the next two uh, queries as well. Uh, my question to you is on uh, Ashok Leland do you think that the uh, best of uh, the scenario for CVs is priced in, in Ashok Leland because stock has been a great performer why you are still liking Ashok Leland and some uh, aspects on valuation and you just heard my colleague Ajay he spoke about how you know CLSA is downgrading Tata Motors what is your view what is LKP's in-house view on Tata Motors because we have seen substantial almost to the tune of 45 50 percent correction from higher levels there is worst in the price well uh, first of all, talking about Ashok Leyland, uh, Ashok Leyland is uh, the prime beneficiary of the CV cycle up move that we have been seeing over the past few months and uh, uh, the stock has also reacted positively to that news but we think that still there is a lot of steam left in the stock. Uh, first of all, uh, let me uh, uh, tell you that uh, the ban on the overloading on uh, the trucks which is happening in UP and Rajasthan that is definitely going to fuel a lot of demand in the two biggest states uh, uh, in the country. And uh, secondly, if we see that uh, the agricultural production has been good uh, of both the Kharif as well as the Rabi crop, so that will be fueling demand for higher uh, uh, number of uh, volumes from these levels. Uh, thirdly, you know, if there is a, a scrapping policy, scrapping uh, a, a policy which gets implemented by the government, which is quite a, a, a great possibility, then Ashok Leila and Tata Motors both and all the CV, other CV makers will be getting benefited out of that to a great extent. So all these parameters, also I need to mention that Ashok Leyland is uh, not into uh, not only into commercial vehicle makers uh, making but also it supplies commercial vehicles or vehicles to the defense sector and defense is on an up move I think and also uh, they uh, earn a great amount of revenues from their spare part business. So uh, overall, uh, which is a high margin business I should say. So overall, uh, if, you, if you see on the LCV side also, the company is doing good with the new launch of Dost Plus, then Boss and Guru vehicles are also doing well. So I think there is a lot of steam still left in Ashok Leyland. We have a target close to about 185 rupees on it. And uh, uh, from uh, these levels, I think it's still looking quite attractive. Al uh, also, also on the valuation point of view, uh, it is quite in the trading range which it has be it had been uh, performing into. So, uh, Ashok Leyland is one of our uh, top picks uh, within the auto space. Now, coming to Tata Motors, yes, Tata Motors is like uh, facing a lot of issues in the European as well as the UK markets. The demand is moving down, both in US as well as UK. 
but i think at this point in time close to about uh, you know uh, about 350 340 rupees uh, the valuations are looking very very cheap as well as uh, the domestic markets are doing good i think uh, the company was in investment phase in q3 and had done lot of it uh, in in various markets and going forward they are coming up with good launches so i think uh, you know they should get a good uh, traction out of it and uh, uh, we therefore we think that there are definitely there are a lot of concerns in it but uh, you know the china chinese chinese markets are doing well the rest of world markets are doing well and they are they may be you know able to somewhat offset the negativity which is coming from us and uk markets and uh, also the hedging uh, thing is uh, going to benefit them on the margin front so i think uh, you know uh, uh, i may not go that harsh on tata motors at this point in time at uh, 340 350 level still we can uh, you know put a buy on the stock and with a target close to about 390 to 400 rupees okay you know actually that's what even we were discussing that at 345 rupees the valuations for tata motors certainly may be looking a little attractive and maybe the concerns are a little overdone uh, ashwin as well says um, the same for tata motors uh, but uh, let's bring on board more viewer queries then and uh, uh, we have sumit who has sent in a question via twitter he wants to know if he must buy jamna auto with a time horizon of 3 to 6 months you know ashwin uh, while we know that this is one of your top wealth creation ideas you alluded to it earlier as well but entry point as well is quite important when you want to invest in stocks so at this juncture is jamna auto a good buy and also he has a time horizon of only 3 to 6 months so would you advise him to extend his time horizon given that you know you're positive on the stock as well Yes, the stock has actually moved a lot. Uh, you know, uh, at eighty rupees right now, it has. Uh, you know, one may say that it looks expensive, but it is not. Looking at the opportunities it is having at this point in time, because uh, being a supplier to the CV uh, CV uh, industry, and uh, you know, uh, it is uh, having a great uh, uh, benefit of it being the market leader not only in India but uh, its second position in a globe uh, uh, on on the global uh, scenario as well. As far as the capacities are concerned. they are expanding their capacities because they are seeing a lot of demand coming from the commercial vehicle side uh, if you look at uh, what they produce they produce leaf springs as well as parabolic springs parabolic springs are uh, you know uh, about 5 to 10% higher uh, or pricier than the leaf springs and uh, the demand for uh, as the demand for 30 more than 37 tonner trucks moves up i think that demand for parabolic uh, springs is also going to move up and that is a high margin business so there is a room for margin expansion and the company with great return ratios i think it stands uh, you know in in a very uh, sweet spot at this point in time also so one should look at it from a longer perspective uh, not only 3 to 6 months he can extend uh, his uh, uh, his time horizon to about 1 year and uh, for a 1 year point of view i think definitely uh, 110 115 should be the target that he should look out for Okay so don't keep a time horizon of 3 to 6 months Ashwin is saying you should consider extending it because it has potential to reach levels of 110 as well uh, Manas 80 rupees is where Jamna Auto is at um, would you recommend a buy Okay I don't think uh, We have Manas online with us. We're going to try and connect with him in just a short while from now. Um, we'll do one thing. We'll move on to our next question. It's Kamath Raj who has sent in his question, and um, it's once again on Ash- one of Ashwin's wealth creation idea, Ashok Leyland. Now he says he is holding Ashok Leyland, a thousand uh, thousand shares of Ashok Leyland at 115 rupees per share. So it's a nice chunky investment he has in the stock, and he wants to know if he must hold or sell. Well, the last couple of months have certainly seen Ashok Leyland rally significantly. um he's bought it also at, at a relatively attractive price of 115 rupees ashwin this is one of your wealth creation ideas so i'm sure you would recommend him to hold on oh definitely he is going to make a lot of chunk uh, uh, money chunk out of it because uh, his buying is uh, as low as 115 rupees and the stock is now at about 150 rupees and my target is close to about 185 rupees so definitely as i said earlier all the positives talking about all the positives not just reiterating uh, reiterating that i think uh, definitely he can be into the stock and look for more benefits out of it 
so no qualms about it. You purchased it at an attractive price. There's lots more uh, upside left in the stock. So hold on is uh, a clear call from Ashwin. We'll do one thing. We'll slip into a very short break. But don't go anywhere because Ashwin Patan stays on with us and we have lots more viewer queries so we're going to answer. Hello and welcome back. Uh, this show is Buy Now, Sell Now with me, Siddharth Bhamre and my co-anchor, Mubina Kabarsi. We are, you know, doing special show and this show is all about auto stocks. Just, uh, you know, before I welcome Manas, uh, we are seeing, you know, market uh, down almost to the lowest point of the day, down by 66, 70 odd points. Uh, we are, you know, seeing selling pressure coming not from banking for a change. Most of the private sector banks are flat. Some are positive, some are negative and private, uh, public sector banks are doing well, but it is the other end of the market where we are seeing decent amount of selling pressure. Let's also welcome Manas Jaiswal into this show. Manas, you have sell calls and I'm not surprised. You're selling BPCL, Tata Motors, we discussed fundamentally is also looking weak to CLSA. Ashwin says that, okay, it's too cheap at this point of time to be very negative on it. But uh, technically, you feel that, you know, it, it can go down further. And UPL is a buy for you, though, you know, it is still struggling to breach that resistance of 730. Uh, so that in BPCL, uh, uh, because most of the uh, most of the oil marketing companies are looking weak on the charts, and uh, um, that BPC in BPCL we saw some uh, some recovery, but it could not sustain above 50 day moving average. Today it has already broken the support of, of 455. And looking at the charts, I think it can again test its recent low. So I just want to revise my target now. 435 is my target now, and take a short call here and keep the stop loss above 455. Second is a sell call on uh, uh, Tata Motors because here the trend is very clear. It is making lower tops and lower bottoms. It is not sustaining on higher levels and today again we have seen selling pressure on higher levels. I think the stock can even break its recent low and it can go down and test 335. So here one can create short position with a stop loss of 351. And last one is a buy call on UPL because it, it is making uh, inverse head and shoulder pattern on the daily chart. Uh, looking at the pattern, I feel that it can break its neckline and, and it can test its Sunday day moving average which is placed near to 750. So take a long position here and keep the stop loss below 720. Like I spoke too soon that Axis Bank and every other bank are flat, but now I'm seeing, you know, selling pressure emerging in Axis Bank, which is down almost to a percent, clearly adding pressure on Bank Nifty. Nifty down by 71 points. Moving on with our uh, auto uh, sector special show, and uh, no auto special show, Movina, can be complete without question on Maruti. And that stock has done some serious wealth creation uh, for its shareholders over a longer period of time. And I don't know anyone on the street who has a sell call or a booking profit call on Maruti. And I'll be surprised if Ashwin has that. Uh, so our next, uh, you know, caller is Srinivas, uh, or uh, the query is from Srinivas Ganpati. He has bought around 120 shares of Maruti, around 8,330. And his query is, should I hold or sell? Well, the answer seems to be quite obvious from most of the participants. But Ashwin, uh, it's, it's at a current price, just 400 rupees below the uh, current price. Do you think that the best of share uh, price is behind, or the best of returns which Maruti has made over a period of time is behind us and now stock can become just like any other decent buy rather than a significant outperformer which was in the past. That as a question from my end and what should viewer do? Uh, he has a buy price of 8,330. Uh, well, I would say that it's not a screaming buy from this point in time, but it's a decent buy definitely uh, at 8,350 because the company is doing well on all the fronts. I mean, on the uh, volume front as well as the new launch of Swift is, uh, you know, uh, uh, it has got an order book of about 60,000 uh, units. And going forward as well, we may think that the uh, FI18 base is high, but it's not like that. In FI19, the company will be catering to these orders and coming up with new launches and the phase, uh, uh, the, uh, phase one expansion at Gujarat plant as well. So I think at this point in time also, it looks quite attractive and uh, we, have, we are seeing margin expansion as well going forward with uh, better product mix. So I think at this point as well, uh, the, the stock looks quite attractive. One can, if someone has bought at this point in time, then definitely he can hold and uh, look out for a target close to 10,000 rupees. 10,000 rupees target price from current levels, that's a fundamentally buy call. 
and at 10,000 it would be at all time high because its all time high was around 9,996 if I am not wrong and from there there was a steep correction and Ashwin feels that that stock can conquer those levels again. Manas, uh, that's from fundamental perspective. Short term, uh, in last uh, three months or so, Maruti has slightly out, uh, underperformed, which is so unlike what it has done in past. What are you suggesting to this in, uh, investor who has Maruti with a buy price of around 8,330? 8, uh, Siddhartha, on the daily charts, the stock uh, is making lower tops and lower bottoms. It is facing resistance on high levels. Even on the monthly chart, I am not very much comfortable uh, uh, taking fresh long over here at current levels. So I think it is better idea because stock has some support near to 8500, keep your stop loss below 8500. If it breaks 8500, then it can correct more, it can go down and test 8000 8, or maybe 8100. So uh, um, the, the last hope is uh, uh, near to 8500. So that is why uh, I think you should keep the stop loss below 8500. If it sustains above 8500 for quite some time and if it if it breaks 9200 or 9300 uh, in next one or two weeks time then definitely you can see some more upside but till now 8500 is a very very important support for maruti so keep your stop loss below 8500 okay so those are some levels on the technical side of maruti that you must watch out for let's move on and bring on born our next query it's anjali pinto who has sent in her question on m m she says she's bought 50 shares of m m at 1382 rupees per share she wants to know if she must hold or sell um you know we just of course uh, flagged off that brokerage note on m m and you know one of the key positives for for companies like these um, is the, the turn in the cycle for commercial vehicles ashwin uh, what is your own stance on m m I think M&M is in a, uh, you know, uh, uh, it has it has seen a very bad uh, uh, performance over the past few years, over three to five years, and now it's time for it to get a benefit out of the new launches that it is going to do, and uh, its EV readiness that it is showing, it will be coming up with a few EV vehicles also in the next couple of years, and uh, on the SUV side, it has lost a lot of market share, but I think going forward with these launches, it will be able to gain back up to some extent. Uh, also on the commercial vehicle side, they are doing very well on the LCV side and I think the management has also recently cited that uh, on the MXCV side, they'll break even, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, in coming uh, couple of quarters. So uh, on the FES side, the tractor side, they are doing good, but we need to be cautious about uh, the tractor cycle because it has been now two and a half years and which for which the cycle has been on an up move but now uh, maybe you know because of the life cycle being uh, of a tractor uh, industry being that much uh, i think uh, in fy19 we may see some sort of softness in the fes uh, volume growth so considering these factors i still go with mnm with a target close to about 825 rupees Okay, so they're doing well on CVs with their new launches. They'll be able to gain market share as well. So M and M is a hold according to Man, uh, according to Ashwin. Uh, but on that note, gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us, Manas to you and Ashwin to you as well for explaining to our viewers, breaking down the auto sector, and of course uh, answering all their viewer queries as well. We hope to catch you once again on another auto special right here on Buy Now Sell Now. With Welcome back. You're watching Buy Now Sell Now right here on ET Now. Markets, meantime, are at the day's low as we speak. 84 points gone for the Nifty. Um, it's all about commodities this morning. We're losing in excess of 1.5% in metals and energy and in the commodities pack in general. But uh, let's talk about what brokerages are saying this morning when it comes to technical calls. Angel Broking has a buy on Tech Mahindra with a stop loss at 602, target at 690 rupees. We also have Modi Lal Oswal, which has a buy on UPL with a target at 760 rupees. Stop loss that they are placing for UPL is at 715 rupees. This as well was a call flagged off by Manas earlier. And IIFL is, has a buy on KPIT Tech, target 239, stop loss 227.5. Well, those are some more trading calls uh, for you, all buy calls, uh, though market is at lowest point of the day. Uh, clearly, we are seeing, uh, you know, a lot of selling pressure. Ram Pitre now joins us, moving on from, you know, uh, equity to commodities. Ram, uh, interestingly, you are bearish on gold and bullish on crude oil and uh, international markets. We are seeing uh, crude oil pretty stable, around $65 per barrel when it comes to uh, Brent crude. What are you seeing to give a buy call over there? 
Then if you see the crude oil, uh, the, so far the range, we have seen a half, almost 64.25, and it has fallen to 59.95, uh, kind of a close to around 60 level. So every $1 resistance I can see in the market, I can see from technically 61, 62, and 63 kind of level. And a strong support area on a daily and weekly chart is coming at around $60. $60. So as long as $60 holds, uh, I think uh, that's uh, around $1 or $2 uh, upside uh, momentum can be seen. And uh, domestically, uh, if you see the rupee uh, movement, uh, it is moving between uh, 64.80 to around 65.10 from last uh, one week or so. And it is uh, slightly weak, uh, uh, close to around 64.80, 82 kind of a level that's bounced back to around 65, 65 plus. So uh, both the things, it is matching because 64 is a strong support area for crude oil and uh, um, uh, for a rupee and uh, uh, crude oil is around 60. So it comes to around uh, uh, that level around 39, 60, 65 kind of a level. We can trade from the long side with a stop loss of 39, 40 and a my target around 33, 9, 9, 5, 30, 4, 000 level for intraday. Okay, Ram, uh, thanks so much. Completely out of time on Buy and Sell now. Thanks for watching. Market Sense up next.